I treat you guys like a distant father. I haven't uploaded in more than three months, and I'll honestly be surprised if my channel isn't dead at this point. Anyway, Christian Mingle. Not the website, but I heard it's good if you like spending $30 a month to meet robots and Nigerian scammers. But nah, today we're talking about the movie. Yup, a movie about a dating site. You know it's just gonna be absolutely, totally great. Anyway, let's go. The movie starts with our main character on a date with just the absolute worst human being. Throughout the date, he stares at some girl and completely ignores her. Obviously this is happening because she didn't use christianmingle.com. After the date, she goes to her friends for support. Babe, if you're not careful, you're gonna be the last one standing. She's watching TV, one that only shows ads apparently, and during her conversation with her TV, she stumbles upon this ad. First Christmas as husband and wife, we met on christianmingle.com. So there's a side plot where her boss really wants to get his hair back, and there's this other guy named Mr. De Boner, <laughs> who has a cure for baldness, which Gwyneth doesn't want to market it because it's obviously BS. I think this scene is supposed to symbolize that life is pointless and we're all gonna die soon. She sees another Christian Mingle ad and for some reason decides to try it. There's at least like five dating sites, so why this one specifically? So she lies in the survey in a movie that's a giant advertisement for the website. That kind of shows that they don't really care who the hell signs up there, which defeats the purpose of the whole website. She goes on her first ever Christian Mingle date, obviously because Christian Mingle can't fail, and uh, she meets this dude named Paul. Honestly, I'm just terrible with time management. I mean, Papa warned me it'll be my undoing. Papa? Oh, my, my dad. What? No, seriously, what else could that mean? Anyway, they have a really realistic conversation, which is not a good thing. She says grace over coffee, which honestly might sound funny, even over my unenthusiastic ass voice, but trust me, it's painful. So the date ends, uh, and it's good, and she likes him. The dilemma, obviously, is that he's Christian, which realistically shouldn't even matter. Christianity obviously isn't some kind of VIP club you have to be born into, but... You know that's how the movie's gonna treat it. At least right up until the last 10 minutes. This is the guy you met online! Meh. Yeah. Her friend's like, you're not a real Christian. And she's like, nah uh And they do this like four times, back and forth, until... Ladies, Gwyneth, you are up. Well, she's all yours. God help her. Actually, I'd like a few minutes alone with Miss Hayden, if I might. <laughs> well then, I'll... Oh, nah. Nah, don't, don't do that. So Boner comes in and he's like, I know you don't believe my pills can make you grow hair. Well, I can. I can. And I can prove it to you. Before. And after. Before. After. How does that prove anything exactly? He says before and after a few more times and the scene just ends. Okay. We're going on a second date. I mean, he's a little like out of Leave It to Beaver, but you guys, he was so charming. Oh, honey, switch the channel. This can only end badly. End? What do you mean? It's just beginning. Sweetie, you're desperate and you're grasping at straws. Why is it in these types of movies that the main character's friends are always trying to destroy their goals and aspirations? Why do they have to make it so realistic? Oh, no, gosh, I wish. Now I'm kind of stuck in the office. Oh, really? Doing what? Analysis mostly, feasibility reports on potential projects. She gets extremely turned on by his feasibility reports. And then there's a three minute scene where he says he doesn't like sushi. And then she's like, okay, I'll teach you how to eat sushi. And then, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. What does this have to do with anything? I hope I'm reaching, but if this is supposed to show that he's a poser too, cause he doesn't like sushi, it's just end me right now. So Paul introduces Gwyneth to his family or his friends, I'm not sure. And when they walk in the house, they're just awkwardly standing next to their partners. Well, most of them. Anyway, they have this sick ass party where they read the Bible and drink orange juice. That one girl from before who is very subtly single is his family friend that his parents want to set him up with. I think it's pretty safe to say that if you knew someone for your whole life and you start dating a stranger you met online, you probably don't want to be with that person. Honestly, we... Oh. Next stop, the delicious train. No. No, 
human has ever said that. I refuse to accept that an adult wrote this into a script. <laughs> oh wait, that worked? Next stop. The... So they finish their date and they kiss. Movie's done, right? No. The big day is finally here where she has to go to church with him and she dresses up like an 80 year old from the 1800s. First of all, you couldn't find a bigger table. And second, I've seen bad movies, okay? But this movie wants you to feel pain. She says grace in front of his family for like one minute straight and just keeps going. I think the movie actually did a really good job at what it was trying to do here. Unfortunately. Wait, I'm... A month? Wait, I'm sorry, you're going to Mexico for a month? Uh... Mm-hmm. That's right. Out of nowhere, he's going to Mexico. Tomorrow. Obviously the movie needed some conflict and it needed it right at this absolute second. So fuck it, let's just send him to, uh, Mexico. Yeah. Be great. He wasn't even gonna tell her, he was just gonna go on the plane and never speak to her for a month. But maybe I don't know what the geniuses behind this movie were thinking. Yeah, that's- that's totally it. So he goes to Mexico, obviously represented by some abandoned desert village. And he calls her, and he's like, Please forgive me. And she's like, nah. And then he's like, come to Mexico. And then she's like, okay. And just like that, even though the boner needs his growing pills, she just up and leaves. Wait, 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 where are you taking my stuff? It's all good. It's all good. It's my stuff. Hey, it's okay. Welcome to Mexico. It's all good. If that's not the sketchiest shit I've ever seen. I think they're trying to show Mexican hospitality or something, but don't tell me you watched that and didn't think she was getting robbed. So the movie suddenly transforms from extremely generic Lifetime movie to Christian Mexican building simulator. Maria wanted to know why, if God loves us so much, he let happen to their village, what happened? If God is love, why did he let this happen? Well, that is a very good question, Maria. And not an easy one to answer, but I know. How about James 1, verses 7 through 8? Let's see. Hermanos míos, considerense muy... Oh my god, I hate all these people. Anyway, it's pretty obvious at this point that she's a heathen. So after this awkward-ass lesson, uh, Paul approaches her and hits her with this. You're not really a believer, are you? Are we really that different? You didn't figure all that out with this? Right. <laughs> he tells her that he found her Christianity for Dummies book. I, I know the scene is supposed to be serious, but it's literally a girl getting busted for having Christianity for Dummies. When you went online, Christian Mingle, what exactly were you expecting? Honestly, I don't know. The number one question in the movie, and that's her answer. Then maybe you could slowly help me get to a place that works for you. That works for both of us. I don't know. I don't know. Shit. I just leave? <laughs> okay, really? She's willing to learn. But he still doesn't want that? What kind of shit is that? She starts going to church, you know, the cool singing and dancing black kind, and her life is suddenly so much better. In these movies, this is usually about the point where she suddenly finds Paul, suddenly gets married, and suddenly gets promoted to CEO, which is so damn stupid. All right, let me bring this in here. Windows, man. All right, so as you can see, uh, can I zoom in? Oh, not like that. As you can see, here's the broken alone phase. I'll just draw on it to make it more visible. Broken alone, and oh my god. And then break up, that already happened too. So now she's like around here. Yeah, I drew the black church part in. Um, you probably can't read that, but it says black church. That That's like where we're at right now, and I, I'm, I'm predicting that she's instantly gonna get married and instantly gonna be a CEO, and I drew this before the movie ended. All right, let's see how accurate this is. She goes to his church to apologize and finds out he's actually with his family friend from before. Okay, there's like 10 minutes left of this movie. Don't make me look stupid. I don't think it's a good idea that we see each other anymore. Oh shit, oh shit. 
Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Dear Senorita, my sorry for my English not so good. I want to say hi and thank you very much for you coming to San Luis, my village. It looks so pretty again. Almost like it was- Okay, okay, okay. Basically, for some reason, the kid that existed in the same room as her in Mexico sends her a letter, even though as far as I know, this was the only interaction they had. Anyway, whatever the hell the main character's name is, moves to Mexico to go teach. What about the boner and her bald boss? Places. I would like to see snow and make a snow angel from with me. That end. What? You need to go to the church. It's it's very important. You you must go now. Jose, you want part of me? I did. <laughs> I knew it all along. Literally, in the last second of the movie, they get together and the movie ends. We don't know what happened to the boner. We don't know what happened to her old job at all, actually. Th that could have not even been in the movie and I don't think it would have made a difference, but anyway. I think we're being watched. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to meet my kids? I know, I got to address the uh... <clears throat> Where did I go for three months? I've been doing pretty much nothing but working and I have been working on videos but I just keep scrapping them, I don't know. Anyway, like I said before, I'm not quitting ever but I might take a little longer in between videos just so I don't put out some BS. Anyway, if you're still out there after three months just, just let me know. Just tell me in the comments or like the video. Oh, and thank you, obviously. God damn. Three months. The next video will definitely not take that long.